You, like many Americans, might be concerned about the risk of rising taxes and the impact that may make on your retirement plans today. We're going to share with you some strategies you can implement into your financial life to mitigate that very risk. Hey, I'm Casey Weed, president here at Howard Bailey Financial, a certified financial planner practitioner and the host of the Retire With Purpose podcast. If you enjoy the content, make sure that you punch that subscribe button and you'll get notified of all of our upcoming videos. In addition, if you have any questions about this content, drop them in the comments section and we will get to as many of those questions as we possibly can. Today, our focus is taxes. And before we get into some scenario analysis, I wanna lay a good foundation of understanding when it comes to the different tax buckets or taxable assets you have as you step into retirement. Those really can be broken down into three separate buckets. That first bucket is your 1099 bucket. We often think of these 1099 assets as those brokerage accounts. Maybe you're thinking of these as mutual funds, uh, stocks paying capital gains or dividends, even certificates of deposit. If you're lucky enough to have a decent interest rate, you still have to pay taxes on those things. We get a 1099 every year and we have to pay taxes whether we're spending those dollars or not and one of the best rules of thumb in finance is to never spend money on money you're not spending so if we're not going to want to spend money on those returns every single year what do we do well most retirees or pre-retirees over the years they've piled money into what is known as the tax deferred bucket and those tax deferred assets or or accounts are things such as your IRAs your 401ks, maybe your 403bs, 457 plans, all these different accounts where you put dollars in, you received a tax deduction when you added dollars to those accounts, and they grow tax deferred your entire life until you're ready to take those dollars out, or you reach the age of 72 and Uncle Sam says you have required minimum distributions and you have to take the dollars out whether you want to or not or face very stiff tax penalties. Then even better than tax deferred is the tax free bucket. What falls into that tax free bucket? We have our Roth IRAs and our Roth 401ks and maybe a Roth 403b. These tax-free retirement accounts mean we pay the taxes on the front end when we make the contribution and those dollars grow tax-free into the future and we don't have required minimum distributions on those assets. The more dollars we have, the more we want to move those things from left to right, but we're limited in the extent that we can add dollars to these accounts in the way of contributions each and every year. In 2021, that number is $19,500 for your 401ks, 403bs, etc. Plus, if you're over the age of 50, you're able to add a catch-up contribution of $6,500. So we're going to be limited to the extent that we can make those contributions each and every year to the tune of $26,000. Maybe you don't have an employer retirement plan at work. You might be making contributions to a Roth IRA or traditional IRA, $6,000 plus a $1,000 catch-up contribution. Maybe you have a SEP IRA. Even with a SEP IRA, you're going to be limited to the extent that you can make contributions to these accounts. But thankfully, we have provisions in the tax code that allow us to take dollars not just a way of contributions and moving those contributions into these accounts, but we can also take dollars out of these tax deferred buckets and move them into that tax free bucket in the way of something called a Roth conversion. And that's what we will be focusing on today is, well, one is we know what a Roth conversion is. Number two, how much is it appropriate to convert each and every year? How much should I move from this tax deferred bucket to this tax free bucket to mitigate my risk of rising taxes in the future? And in order to figure that out and analyze it today, we're gonna to be utilizing some software. We're gonna take a look at things from a very high level. Again, the focus of these videos is to help us best understand how to do these tax calculations for ourselves. We're not gonna get into the gritty of 
avoiding social security taxes or uh, optimizing our social security benefits or pension benefits. Uh, should they retire at 63? Should they not? Our focus today is purely Roth conversion and mitigating that risk of rising taxes. But it's good for us to set, set a solid foundation of understanding of this case. This couple, they're currently about 62 years old. They plan to retire at the age of 63. Their social security comes out to about $1,500, $1,200 a month. They have a small pension, about $1,100 a month. And they have saved some pretty good retirement assets. Unfortunately, all of their retirement assets have been saved in 401ks, traditional IRAs, 403bs, to the tune of about $700,000 altogether. So they have $700,000 in these tax deferred retirement accounts. We're going to leverage a conservative rate of return of 5% a year in order to do these projections. And they are currently spending about $4,000 a month. We're gonna factor in a 3% inflation adjustment each and every year. And now let's take a look at the tax situation. So currently, in the year 2021, we'll find that they're still working. They're still earning a decent wage. They're making around $132,000 a year. And they're also making contributions to their retirement accounts to the tune of about $28,000. Their gross income comes out to $103,200. They are applying a standard deduction of about 25 grand, bringing their taxable income to $78,000. $100. Where does that land them? That lands them right here in the top of the 12% federal tax bracket under current law. And let's look at what happens over time. First of all, I want to take a look at their provisional income. So their provisional income are those dollars that are used to calculate how much of their social security is going to become taxable each and every year. And initially when they first step into retirement, now, their provisional income is going to add up to $34,773, meaning that only about $2,800 of their Social Security benefit is going to be taxable. So their taxable Social Security is actually 1387 in 2023. If we fast forward to 2032, when those RMDs start to kick in, well, now they're currently finding themselves with total Social Security of $37,000, provisional income of $47,000. So their taxable Social Security is now $9,000. In the first year, they take their required minimum distribution. Now they have an RMD that is going to make their taxable Social Security jump up to $32,000. So we went from $9,000 in taxable Social Security to that first year RMD, now they've got $32,000 in taxable Social Security benefit. That's going to greatly increase the amount of taxes that they're going to have to pay. And here are their tax brackets over time. So once they retire, they're gonna find themselves in the 10% federal tax bracket. As we continue throughout retirement, we're getting to 2032. They're in the 12% federal tax bracket once their RMDs kick in. So they're jumping from 10% to 12%. And then as those RMDs continue to increase, because your because you're required minimum distribution is going to be based on your life expectancy. So each and every year, your life expectancy shortens and your required distribution is going to increase. So they jump from the 12% bracket to the 22% federal tax bracket. Many times we might look at someone like this and say, well, they're in a higher tax bracket today than they're ever going to be in the future because they're going to earn less in wages. They're going to retire, right? They won't have those W-2s anymore. And we often forget about those required minimum distributions, which can actually force us into a higher tax bracket and cause much more of our social security benefits to be taxable in addition. Their annual taxes in those early years of retirement are extremely low. During those early 2020s, even into 2030, they're paying very little in taxes, a few hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars. But as soon as those RMDs kick in, the amount of taxes they're having to pay each year increase quite dramatically. And we can see the impact in their cumulative taxes over their lifetime as that begins to skyrocket once they get to that RMD age and start taking out those IRA distributions. So what can we do about it? 
What we're, what we're going to do is we're going to click on our little tax tracker button over here and we're going to do some tax analysis. And what we're seeing at the top is their current qualified balance. They have $702,000 in tax deferred retirement accounts, IRAs, 403Bs, 401Ks. And so they have a total of $700,000. If they don't do anything, they'll pay a projected lifetime tax of $700,000, just shy of $700,000. And that means that their legacy, when they pass away, they'll be about $1.3 million left behind to their heirs. And our target here is to have a qualified balance of $640,000 next year, uh, have an after-tax balance of $40,000, and this is all being accomplished by doing a $63,466 annual Roth conversion. So every year we're moving about $60,000 from those qualified accounts over to their Roth IRA. And we're going to do that for a total of five years. And we've used five years as a nice round figure for us to begin to do our estimate estimation. So how did we come up with this $63,466? Well, three things had to be true. One, we wanted to ensure the legacy dollars we're going to be higher under the conversion scenario than they would be if we didn't do anything at all. In addition, we wanted to maintain a qualified account balance, traditional IRA dollars, that would keep our required minimum distribution under our standard deduction each and every year. And we're looking for a total savings of projected lifetime tax that is better than what we would pay if we didn't do anything. If we don't do anything, we're looking at a $700,000 roughly projected lifetime tax. And if we just do five years of $60,000 a year, our lifetime tax goes to about $350,000. So we're hitting on all three of those different points in order to make sense out of doing this conversion. One more thing I wanna point out is that when we look at end of life, if they don't do anything, they've reinvested a lot of those required minimum distributions they didn't need for income in the 1099 bucket. They'll leave that behind to their heirs and that'll make up about 60% of their life savings. They'll still be leaving behind around 40% of their assets in a qualified balance, that tax deferred bucket. That means that of $1.2 million, they're gonna leave behind around a half a million dollars of tax deferred funds to their heirs that will be required to be distributed over 10 years at their children's highest marginal tax rate, which could be significantly higher than their own. Now, we're going to go back and take a look at what happens when we apply this scenario. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this scenario of doing that Roth conversion and compare it to their current scenario. So doing those two side by side, we can see that we're accumulating about the same amount of assets under the tax optimized scenario rather than the current scenario. But keep in mind, a lot of those assets at the end of life are now going to be tax free. If they live long enough, they're all going to be tax free at the end of their life. You know, but now what happens if taxes increase? And we're gonna leverage a 50% increase in tax rates. And you might be saying to yourself, 50%, there's no way we're gonna see a 50% tax increase in the future. Well, some experts will say that we need to see at least a doubling of current tax rates in order to cover the government debt. Some will say even a tripling of our current tax rates in order to cover the government debt. And we already know that tax rates are set to expire and go back to the pre-Tax Cuts and Jobs Act tax rates in 2026. So we use 2026 as our tax increase date. We increase tax rates by 50%. Well, that doesn't even take us back to some of the tax rates that we've seen in the past. We're in one of the lowest tax rate environments in history. If we have a 10% tax rate today, a 50% increase is 15%. 12% goes to 18%. 22 goes to 33. Even at the highest marginal tax rate of 37%, we're only seeing an increase of 50 to 55.5% with a 50% increase in taxes. That may seem very high, but we have seen the highest marginal tax rate throughout history be as high as 94%. So even 55.5% would seem to some to be a low tax rate on some of those highest incomes. So what happens if we see a tax increase of 50% under the current scenario and we don't make any changes? 
now we find that instead of having $1.4 million in later life, we have a million dollars or $880,000 instead of $1.3 million. So we are seeing a cutting of our assets to the tune of close to a half a million dollars potentially with a 50% increase in taxes. But what if we go and optimize our taxes and do some Roth conversions. Well, what we're going to find is we have $1.36 million still in our retirement accounts in those later years because most of the dollars that we had, we converted to Roth IRA by the time taxes increased in the future. And now we have the confidence of recognizing that even if taxes go up or taxes stay the same, we're going to be in a better position than we were before. I hope you found this information helpful in better understanding your current tax situation and those different tax buckets and just getting that thought engine started about how you might go about mitigating the risk of rising taxes for yourself. If you'd like to get an analysis done like this for you, then all you have to do is click on the link in the description and schedule a time to visit with our team.